everyone! Okay, a couple of house cleaning things before we really begin the video. So, let us go. One, uh, if I sound stuffy, sorry, it's allergy season. Uh, I am so gross and mucusy and I hate it, absolutely hate it. Two, sorry for the disappearance. A little thing called OC-tober took over my, all of my time in October and I decided the, to use the last two weeks of September to prep for OC Tower because I decided to be crazy and make a comic. And guess what? I did plus a few more pages. I'm probably going to make a video about that and upload that experience later on, hopefully this month. And I'm re-recording this audio from the original audio because the original audio I feel like is outdated and sad. So let's go. So today I am going to show off a redraw that I did of this art that I did back in 2017. It was the first type of piece of art that I did that I was really, really, really proud of. Um, I know it doesn't look like much now. <laughs> I, if anything, it looks kind of terrible. I remember some of the main critiques that I took into consideration when redrawing was the fact that I wanted to change their designs up. They look very simplistic because I had a much different and more simple style back then. I needed to improve the knight's entire outfit because I can't draw armor, but I feel like I've gotten a little better at that, especially drawing metal. And I want to change perspective because I always have my characters leaning the three-fourth view, their bodies do that, and their heads, and I thought I can make them a little bit more action-orientated and look a little more interesting. So in total, this redraw took eight hours in 30 minutes and 15 seconds. I know, absolutely crazy. <laughs> I did it over the span of two days, so basically breaking up, I believe like three hours one day and then five hours the next with the minutes here and there, wherever. I really can't draw backgrounds. I still can't draw backgrounds, but I feel like I've improved a little bit because I like using references. So I had a reference on my laptop while I was drawing because I draw my iPad and Procreate. Um, the original art, I actually used Fire Alpaca and my Wacom Intuitos. Intuitos? I can flash it on the screen if you want. <laughs> It's a very basic drawing tablet. I think I got it for like $99 in the Apple store. But one of the things I've found as an artist is I was a traditional artist. I would only draw traditionally. So when I started transitioning into digital art, my art wasn't really that good. So I would just take my traditional art and redraw over it digitally. But even then, I found it very difficult. Like I believe this original one took me almost the same amount of time, but it looks not as good. <laughs> At least in my opinion, it doesn't look as good. At the time, maybe that's the best I could do, but I know I could do so much better now. So when trying to do backgrounds and trying to get the characters in, I tried doing the like a breakup rule, make sure everyone is in like those little corners of the squares that I drew. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, just because that's something that I learned in film. If you're gonna try and align people in a certain scene, you want them to be on one of those corners from the big middle square because that's where people mostly focus when they are watching something or if they like some I guess has to do with a scene or art that's where your eye instantly goes those are the common points I don't remember the exact name of them but yeah that's what they are called something else too is I wanted to flesh out their personality I guess a little bit more because um, <laughs> in the original drawing you can kind of tell what their personalities are at least only two of them and that would be the white mage and I guess the black mage um there I labeled this like D&D &D draw originally so I guess this is supposed to be like a D&D &D party I have no idea but I wanted to flesh out their personalities more because it adds a little bit more character and interest to the overall work so I decided 
okay, the knight is going to have her shield completely up and she's going to be in a very, like, defensive stance because when you have your feet far apart, that usually distributes to weight so then you can take a little bit more force at you while the thief, or I guess the rogue, has his hands up in a fighting position so he is ready to absolutely deck you and probably rob you. The white mage is still very cowardly looking, except now I have his leg up. I mean, it, that kind of gets cut out later on, but his leg is up, so it kind of shows that he's like losing balance and kind of like, ooh, no, he's crunching himself up, like, basically. And then finally, the black mage, or I guess like the witch, she's doing like a fun pose where she has her broom up and she is ready and she's like I am gonna look so great while doing this and I'm gonna have fun while doing it so I guess like something that's probably very obvious with my old art and my new art is um, I was going through, at least in the old art, I was going through a thing where I used to try having a very Eastern anime looking type of style, of course, like anyone would during that era, and I got into high school and such, and I'm like, well, I want to be taken more seriously as an artist, so I decided to try to be more cartoony. However, I still was death gripping the anime influences because a lot of the artists that I personally really like have a very cartoony style except they do reference or they do have a lot of like anime-ish type of tropes incorporated into their western-ish style so it's like a a nice blend a nice mix of the two of them so that's what I was trying to do and that's why you end up with really weird proportions like super long arms feet that just straight up don't exist um the e place where the ears connect to the jaw, that area is just completely messed up. And the waists, everyone's waists were tiny. Even if I wasn't trying to do like an hourglass or a Dorito type of figure, that's what it ended up happening. And it just looked terrible. <laughs> I won't lie, this is like an era of my art that I'm like, okay, I had some good ideas, but execution horrible. What the heck? Another thing about transitioning into digital art is the default pen is like a G pen. It's a very thick pen and I'm used to taking shorter strokes at least when I draw traditionally because I would just draw traditionally in like pencil and then maybe ink it in marker. I wouldn't do anything super broad or confident. So with the pen that automatically came with Fire Alpaca, you need to have very confident lines because they're very bold. However, uh, my art does not reflect that. So then some of my art line art looks very wonky and not good. And even now, I still struggle with that. I hate lining art. It's terrible. But at least I've found a pen now that I can use. I think it's called like an Amaru pen. Hold on, let me look that up. Yeah, I switched between a custom pen called Hard Dip Pen and Amaru Pen 1. So they have a much lighter type of pressure that you can put down on it and it's very sensitive to how much pressure so obviously you put more pressure the darker it is and I believe the thicker it will be but the lighter the pressure that you put on it the lighter it will be and the thinner it will be so I can get away with kind of having more sketchy lines in some areas being thinner and some areas being thicker while also incorporating I guess like folds and crosshatch in certain places so it can look still kind of naturalistic and nice and also my my style I kind of I wouldn't say I'm good at anatomy but I gotten a lot better at it 
like I still draw people with like really long legs and I'm just gonna blame Sailor Moon for that because <laughs> I really like Sailor Moon and it's just like ooh, they have really long legs also hands I draw big hands but maybe, maybe it's just destined. Maybe I'm just supposed to draw big hands. I've also changed the way I color. In older art, I was a very cell shaded type of based artist. I still do cell shading here and there. But I've definitely tried to make a transition towards having soft and hard shading within my art because you can get the best of both worlds and get the benefit of both of them. So I guess like a good example is with metal. Metal has multiple different types of colors in it, more than you would expect. And it's one of those things where like gold metal, for example, it's not just like, oh, you're changing different types of yellow. No, there's like browns, oranges, reds, whites, uh, lighter yellows, yes. And like, and of course, depending how reflective the metal is, sometimes the metal will have different colors and hues, like gems. Gems, some er, gems can ha be like a base color or purple, but reflect green and turquoise and pink, like... What is this? This is a whole new level. So I tried to switch to like a more mix type of brush when it comes to this type of stuff. I believe in this drawing, I used a brush called Ink Bleed, Fine Dry Ink, Leaky Fountain, and Chalky. I've also found a very strong fondness for using a brush called Polane. The more harder you press down, the darker the pen is going to be. And also, if you keep layering it, the layers will get darker. So that's something that I've found a bit of a fondness for. So the background itself, I, it's easy when you have a background, well on the original one it was kind of easy because it's like, okay, they're in a forest. That's my go-to for everything, draw things in a forest. So it's like, okay, I have some familiarity with drawing in a forest, but it's just, how do you draw the forest? That's the issue. Like, I can draw a bush, like the basics of a bush, but how do you make a bush? How do you add texture? How do you add layers? How do you make grass? How do you draw dirt? I can't draw dirt. I hate drawing dirt, <laughs> which is so weird because it has a very specific look and texture to it, but you can obviously tell when it's like, oh, that doesn't really look like dirt. You know, like, does that make any sense? I know for the background, I used a lot of chalk-based type of brushes. And I believe I used a, like, an, like a paintbrush, if I remember. I'm looking through. I think I used a lot of the round brush, flat brushes, and watercolor brushes and also gouache. I have two different gouache brushes. I have the one that defaults with Procreate and I also have one that's downloaded called gouache-ish. I love using the gouache-ish bush brush. <laughs> I love using the gouache-ish bush brush brush not bush geez um to kind of get that stuff all figured out and I think, I mean, I think the background actually came out okay. I cheated with the flowers, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta give yourself a little bit of leeway, you know? You gotta try a little bit. For all the methods that I tried putting in there, I think it, it was like, okay, that's not too, too bad. And if you see my little notes that pop up here and there, that's because 
me thinking. I was just like, what am I doing? And also, I forgot about the technique where farther something away is. It's technically supposed to be lighter. I usually do the opposite where I make things darker. Um, I've made that mistake before and I s will constantly make that mistake, but I won't lie, like, it does look nicer when you do it lighter, but there are certain scenes where you're like, okay, well, I want to make it darker, like in a forest. If it's supposed to be a scary dark forest, sometimes you want it to get darker, but have like little light hues here and there, you know. <laughs> That's pretty much my redraw. I hope you guys like the newer version and what I did. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer my older, kind of more stylized one? Or do you prefer my newer, uh, it's not realistic. I was gonna say realistic, but that's not true whatsoever. Do you prefer my newer one where it's like, yeah, uh, you could kind of tell I learned anatomy. <laughs> I learned how to digitally draw, but yeah. Uh, all in all, have a good one and stay safe. <laughs>